it was therapeutic. The whole thing, it ended up being this. <laughs> it turned into something else. It was... <laughs> when I arrived to pick them up, the daughter Bianca, she was already sneaking a little beer in the corner and I was like, oh, here we go. This is sometimes how it goes. When I arrived, I saw you up the top uh, sneakily already having a beer. <laughs> and I was thinking, we're gonna live one. <laughs> you know, mother-daughter tours, you just gotta... Yeah. <laughs> sometimes a little buffer is okay. They were wearing tracksuits, hoodies, and these white, uh, you know, um, sporty shoes. And I thought, well, here, this is one of these tours that's gonna have to end up in St. Pauli. The River Barn in St. Pauli, it's kind of a strange place because uh, it's the largest red light district in Germany, so immediately one might think, Ooh. but what's interesting is that actually because of Riverbank and St. Pauli was inhabited mostly by harbour workers, by immigrants, by working class people and refugees, it became a very integrated, tolerant, open sort of a place. You don't only have, you know, brothels and uh, sex workers, but you also have family restaurants, you have theatre shows, like high-end theatre shows, Christmas markets, little bars, cafes, clubs and things. So it's an all-in kind of party zone of Hamburg. In her early teens, she had been to Hamburg before. The only thing I knew about Hamburg was that my mother had seen the Beatles there before wow. they were big. When the Beatles arrived in Hamburg in 1960, they weren't actually that good and uh, they didn't have any original songs and there was five of them. There was Stuart Sutcliffe, the original bass player. He was best friends with John Lennon. And there was also Pete Best, who was the original drummer, later replaced by Ringo Starr. After two years of playing in Hamburg, they basically went from zero to heroes. But it was really a combination of their blind ambition colliding with German work ethic and the revolutionary times. I took them to the most notorious bar. I don't know if your mum had known about this bar if she'd been in Hamburg already. Probably not. She knew about it. Oh, she knew about it? <laughs> she knew about it. I had no idea. And my mother probably tried to keep it because she knew I would have dug the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but she must have known something was going on when we were walking through a pair of legs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she explained to me what the litza was. Yeah, yeah. Like it could be the spot between the cushions of a couch. Could be. Or... <laughs> <laughs> The most famous bar, arguably, on the Reaper Barn can be found just a little bit off the Reaper Barn. So the history behind the Tsaritsa is that it was a bar that was built in the 60s for the proprietors of the Reaper Barn to come and discuss the issues that would be affecting the Reaper Barn. So obviously you'd have territorial disputes, uh, there was AIDS in the 80s when pornography came onto VHS tape, or well, anything that would affect their industry, this is where they would come to discuss the issues. We got into the bar, uh, we're sitting down, we're drinking a beer. You, you went down to the toilet, and I turned, I turned around to your mum, and I said to her, You know, your daughter reminds me of a girl I used to date back in Australia. And without skipping a beat, she said, A girl you had the good sense to get away from? <laughs> and I was like, That's true, that's how it was, yes, that's right. What a lot of people don't realise is that actually downstairs in the basement, in a secret door opposite where the toilets are, there's actually an underworld fight club. Built in the 1970s as a place where the proprietors of the river barn could actually literally resolve their disputes through trial by combat. All the biggest names in boxing have been there to do a round, including Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. There's even a statue of Mike Tyson in the corner. We went downstairs. I said, you go first because if anyone's going to be able to get us into the ring, it's going to be you, you know, because you're kind of sassy. I had told him that my brother boxes uh -huh. and I was wondering if we could take a picture. And at first he misunderstood it. Well, my German's not that great, but he thought I wanted to take pictures of the boxers. And he's like, well, maybe this one or that one. And I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to fight my mother in the ring and take some pictures. Is that okay? And he, and he was like, no, 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 we're, we're training here. But I'll tell you what, go get some gloves and you can do some photos just over there. So uh, I said to the girls, okay, just um, pose, you know, like you're gonna, you know, and I'll, I'll take some photos for you. you know. When you sent me those photos, uh, and in the first one, your mum has a very sinister look in her eye, like she's got a score to settle. And she started getting really kind of serious. And she was like, you know, like looking for the angles and looking at it, and I'm like, uh, if you can, if you have kind of a thicker skin, she's fun. If, if you're a little too sensitive, my mother's not the most fun person. 
we have a very strong bond. We've been through a lot. And when people do get to get to experience our relationship, like you were firsthand, the one other soul witnessing this all happening, like for that amount of time, you know. And then finally, Bianca's mum fully landed one on the jaw and she went flying. I was like, oh my God. In the last photo, which I think came a split second after the punch had been landed, well, you're quite, yes. you're taking it with quite good, you know, uh, humor. But the look in her, I'd never seen a happier look on a person's face. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, a she loves it. They were both smiling. <laughs> so um, I thought, okay, I, I think that's good. I'm not too sure. I, I think... still have like a broken, I think I have a chipped cheekbone from no. that day. No. <laughs> I just got the chip off my shoulder. So there you have it. That's uh, that's my Fight Club story. This is the story about a, a wonderful tour that was amazing that I really enjoyed and it's just like a bit of a thread in a tapestry of stories uh, that I hope to continue to explore with these little videos. So uh, yeah, thanks. It was, it was great. Like it was, <laughs> of any tour I've ever taken, this, it takes the cake, like not even the cake, it takes the whole buffet, <laughs> the whole wedding after, it was that, that's how good it was.